Appearing on MSNBC's Way Too Early, foreign relations expert Richard Haas noted reports coming out of Ukraine that Russian soldiers are sabotaging their own vehicles because they don't want to take part in the invasion. And he says that is a bad omen for Vladimir Putin. Take a look at the MSNBC discussion. During a virtual meeting of his Security Council yesterday, Putin continued to push false claims that Nazis are in control of the Ukrainian government. He also said that Ukrainians and Russians are, quote, one people, but the Ukrainians have been brainwashed. Putin has not used the term invasion. Instead, he's calling the indiscriminate shelling of Ukrainian cities a special military operation and says that his, his soldiers are the real heroes. The speech was intended to push back against reports of logistical problems slowing down the Russian army, as well as intelligence from the Pentagon that some Russian troops are surrendering or sabotaging their own vehicles rather than fighting. Joining us now, President of the Council on Foreign Relations, our friend Richard Haas. Good morning, Richard. Thanks for being here. The reality of what's happening and what Putin is saying are clearly two different things. What will Putin have to do? Is there a way that he could get his plan back to track and actually line it up with his narrative? I don't think there's any way, Jonathan, he can get his original plan back on track because that ship has sailed. He was counting on very little resistance from Ukraine. He had no respect for Zelensky. He thought the United States after Afghanistan had no uh, stomach. Europe, he also had contempt for, particularly Germany. So he underestimated his opposition, overestimated the capability of his own forces. So now we're clearly on plan B. And now he's basically turning to quantity, if you will, more than quality to essentially level big parts of, of Ukraine. But because he is who he is, because he's an autocrat, he has to be infallible. He, ha he can never admit that he, he, he made a mistake. So that's what you had yesterday. I don't know what the word is in Russian, but it must be something like Spinsky they have more troubles. I think you know, the Russians aren't used to fighting this kind of a war. This isn't what they did in Syria. It's at a scale that they're not, they're not used to. Uh, the equipment looks uh, old. The troops don't look well trained. They're not motivated. They don't seem to understand what it is they're doing and why. So I, I think this is of a, a larger piece. The idea that there might be some troop sabotaging is really interesting. Uh, it doesn't seem to be happening at scale, but this has got to be Putin's nightmare. Because essentially he depends upon his security forces, not just the soldiers, but obviously in turn inside the country. And that's any autocrat's nightmare that as protests begin to mount, that the security forces either get overwhelmed or show sympathy with the protesters. The AP reports that on Friday, NATO countries refused to police a no-fly zone over Ukraine, warning that such a move could provoke widespread war in Europe with nuclear power Russia, the organization's top civilian official said. Speaking after a chairing meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his counterparts, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg acknowledged the suffering of the Ukrainian people as Russia ramps up its use of heavy firepower, shelling cities and other sites, forcing more than a million people out of the country. Blinken added, What is taking place now in Ukraine is horrific. It's painful and we see human suffering. We see destruction at a scale we haven't seen in Europe since the Second World War. We are not going to move into Ukraine, neither on the ground nor in the Ukrainian airspace. Under a collective security guarantee binding NATO's 30 member countries, Article 5 of its founding treaty, all allies must come to the defense of an ally if it finds itself under attack. Any shooting down of a NATO warplane by Russia could trigger that clause. The only way to implement a no-fly zone is to send NATO fighter planes into Ukrainian airspace and then impose that no-fly zone by shooting down Russian planes, Stoltenberg said. He said allies believe that if we did that, we would end up with something that could end in a full-fledged war in Europe. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has appealed for the West to enforce a no-fly zone over his country, most recently after a fire overnight at one of Ukraine's nuclear plants, the largest in Europe. But Stoltenberg said, We are not part of this conflict, and we have a responsibility to ensure that it does not escalate and spread beyond Ukraine, because that would be even more devastating and more dangerous. NATO members and officials are alarmed at Russian President Vladimir Putin's threat to use nuclear weapons should one of their members get involved in his war. NATO has no weapons itself, but the United States, Britain, and France are nuclear powers like Russia. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to visit us at rawstory.com. And if you'd like to see more of the Raw Report, please like and subscribe. And join others who like their news raw too.